What's up, everybody? It's your favorite repaint that should have been the initial release that they didn't do because they wanted people to be interested in the mold enough to buy the repaint's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at Mastermind Creations Ocular Max Azalea. This is on loan to me from East Coast Toys. I'll be sending this back as soon as I'm finished reviewing it. Link is in the description. They send little cool treats and stuff along with it. Tell them Scully sent you. That being said, she has a fair amount of accessories. Let's get started by looking at them. She comes with three faces. One where she's trying to make sure that Cup and Hot Rod aren't still outside the city. One smiling friendly face, and then one, let's call it her oh dear face. Or maybe damsel in distress face. All of them detail well with red paint and the metallic blue that do look good on top of pink plastic. She comes with her two signature guns. The handles do move down so that she can hold them. They do have the nice silver paint and the orange paint on them. And she can hold those just fine. Those guns can also peg in to her uh, what is it? Trunk area, let's say. And uh, I guess you could have them the other way, which would probably be better. But uh, maybe they look like exhaust this way. I'm good either way, but they plug in. She comes with her sporty little antenna made of pink plastic that once you remove this piece, you'll find will fit in there quite securely for a more signature looking vehicle. And she comes with six extra hands, all of which are swappable on a ball peg. Two trigger finger hands, two gun supporting hands, and one posing hand slash supporting hand. I know people feel a way about this when it comes to Transformers. I personally like it because I think it keeps the sculpt better than the other options. If you compare this with the Fans Toys version, which I do have and do prefer ultimately, I prefer these hands better because it keeps the integrity of the sculpt. I don't need the fingers to articulate if I have the options to pose the hands in a variety of different poses that seem natural or dynamic. Now, let's talk about the figure. So, the head. Great articulation. The pink looks painted to me. It may not be. The metallic blue is painted. The red lipstick is painted. There is this break in the sculpt for the neck in order to get extreme head articulation down to there, up to there, side to side, swivel, because there is a ball peg. I think it's a double ball peg that goes from the head to the neck, which is nice. Uh, you can hide this a bit by sort of putting a little pressure on the neck, but then it looks like she's kind of constantly shrugging her shoulders. It's You could try to maybe get something in between. That doesn't look too bad. Um, so there is a little bit of play there. Th there's some options. The chest, we do have some white paint here and here. It looks good to me. Gray paint there. No issues. We have... A ball peg from here to here, and then another one from here to here. So almost like an SH Fig Warts. As a result, you can get an ab crunch to, uh, let's see, to there, and back to there, and then a swivel at kind of both places. But you have to use both, and it's not a great range either. But I think it's ultimately fine. Better, better a little bit than none, you know what I mean? Uh, then we have the purple paint there, yellow paint, red, I mean, pink paint, red paint, pink paint, <laughs> sound crazy. Um, that all looks good. No issues. So the shoulders are on a hinge, and then they swivel here. So it basically acts as a universal. The hinge is a soft ratchet. It gets you past 90 degrees. There is a bicep swivel, a double-jointed elbow that gets you the full run. And then the wrists are obviously on a ball peg for the swap-out feature, which does give you some in-out and stuff as well, and up-down and all that. So that's nice. Uh, the hips are, are wonky, but let's see. You can kind of get them out to there, which is nice. It's not perfect, but it's nice. And then forward and back to about there. So decent range. Thigh swivels built around this. This is basically, this is an outward hinge here, pegging into here that creates the swivel. And then it's pegged into the center piece, which are two separate gray pieces, I think. Yes. And that gives you the swivel as well. That's how that's done. It's interesting. And we have a double jointed. Is it double jointed? No. It's single jointed, which is surprising because it feels like it should be double jointed, but it's not. It gives you a great range either way. So works perfectly. And the sculpt is pretty cool. I like this little stuff between the knee pad, which can cover down on the joint, by the way, and um, the lower leg. So I'm good with that. Ankles. We have an ankle tilt down, an ankle tilt up, a toe tilt up. The bottom is a little red there. That's nice. And then a rocker. I do have some paint chipping, and there is some die cast down in this lower leg. 
And then there she is from the back. <sighs> this figure is is fine. Um, it's not great, but it's not terrible. The hips are like, I've, I wish there was some way to... F the hips are one of the things that bother me the most about it, kind of aesthetically. I wish there was a way to better collapse them. Like, it seems like you should be able to, like, push them up and then push them back down, but you can't, and uh, it's frustrating. And it's also very plain. It's a very plain figure. Now, when we do transformation, we're going to go from this mode to car mode because we went from car mode to robot mode when we did the black repaint version. But um, And then we can do it in five minutes or less when they do five more releases of it, theoretically. But it's not, it's not, it's not bad. It's not a bad figure. It's, it's especially not a bad action figure. It's just lacking that certain something. So here we are, the moment of truth. And this is kind of what I've, I've been talking about recently. This is the reoccurring theme I keep coming back to, and that is intentions. I've heard a lot of scuttlebutt about this, how much more solid, how much better, blah, 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 blah. And I think it could be true from a certain point of view, but let's talk about it. So I prefer the fans toys look. I prefer the paint. I prefer the height. I prefer specifically the hips. It just looks more genuine to me. Now, I never transform my fans toys rouge, as you know if you've been watching. And the reason for that is because I had the sinking sensation that it would never be the same again. And I think that I'm right. Can't say for sure, because I never did it. But I think that I'm right. So let's talk about how these figures feel. Solid as a rock. The legs jiggle jangle because I had to dig paint out of there, which you know is an issue for me. Um... People thought I mistakenly did it. You know the deal. This one, it just... And then I have a problem getting this one to stand as well. But it just isn't the same. This isn't what I'm looking for. It could be what you're looking for. You could be looking for something that has a lot of dynamic poses and capabilities in that regard. You could be looking for something that's super efficient to transform back and forth. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing invalid about that. It's not what I'm looking for. I know because I get a lot of feedback from uh, viewers that a lot of people are in the same boat as me where they're really mainly concerned with display purposes. And in my opinion, this displays better. This is a better action figure. No real right or wrong answer there. It just comes down to what your intention is as a collector in regards to owning an RC figure. So let's take it one step forward. Here she is, with Rouge rather, with the rest of my season three main cast. My cup is missing a Saigar. I think I lost it when we moved stuff around and now I think it's gone forever. But there she is. And there is the MMC one. And it just doesn't work as well, in my opinion. That's all I got though, is my opinion. I can't speak for you. But hopefully at least I can give you a visual that'll let you realize which one you want for your show. So the first thing we have to deal with is, is this backpack. Um, separate the two pieces and then get this piece down and you want to start pulling this piece up. And it can be a bit of a bear because, uh, because I'm not the best at doing this stuff anyway. And there's also... Um, not much not much wiggle room so now that you have them in two separate pieces you can extend this front flap up as well and normally you would bring these car seats up um i don't they don't make me feel i'm, I'm sure they're fine it's just I'm, I'm just gonna keep them down and out of the way because i'm on a really good streak right now of not breaking things and i'm going to try to continue that streak i'll probably forget to do it uh flip it back when we get into car mode but it'll just make me feel more comfortable now sometimes my comfort you know sometimes my comfort you know needs to be taken into uh consideration as well oh and flip these um these side pieces towards the front and then these sliding bars, you want to move them down. This is always the part that's the, the most tricky, in my opinion, on all RCs. But what I suggest is keeping the elbows towards the body and the arms fully extended. That will help you stay oriented. Flip up the chest piece. Use your double jointed or double hinged gray piece here. And you want to collapse the head so that she's playing a, a bit of peekaboo behind this chest panel. 
bring the arms up around the opposite way and you want to open up these sections here which will allow the arms to fully collapse next to each other over top of the head. Now let's try to get some of this backpack squared away. Rotate this piece down and just get it out of the way. This is the piece that we're gonna try to fix now. And we're going to make sure that all of this is aligned as much as possible and tab in. Then we have to get the legs sorted. So break the connection at the shins and fold the feet up. Break the connection at the hips. You're gonna spin the legs around, open up this flap, spin that 180, get your tire out. I'm gonna use my tool, which is called a spudger and is available on Amazon. That'll so save me a PM or two. And fold the leg in. And then the tire comes back around and this piece kind of sits uh, flat up against here. Same for the other side. Open this up. Use my little tool here. There we go. Spin this 180. That'll sit flat up against here. Get the tire out of the way, rotate the leg down, collapse it properly. Tire, uh, it's gotta go in a little bit. Okay, and then you just connect your pieces. So you got tabs on both sides here. And then you got these pieces that come down and tab in to those, um, these little white pegs here. Uh, I'm just going to try to find it the best I can at the moment. We'll clean it up there. And then these two flaps uh, lay on the side and tab in to those tabs there. And that should do it. I'll clean her up. We'll take a look at her. And there it is in vehicle mode. And I, it's compact. It, you know, once again, it just doesn't have any pizzazz. It just looks kind of, you know, dull. Uh, underneath is, you know, what are you going to do? It's RC, right? I, I, I'm, this is easily forgivable to me. But up here, it just doesn't have, I don't know, man. It just doesn't scream quality. It screams toy, and that's just not my bag. You forgot to put the seats down, didn't you? Yep. You think they're going to take it easy on you? No. There are a number of details that come through nicely, such as the translucent lenses on the headlights, the gray paint, and then the white paint in certain places. But overall, it just doesn't look interesting. It looks dull. But you know what doesn't look dull? A size comparison with Tiger Tracks. Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. Some of the plastic feels very flimsy, especially the stuff on the backpack. That's probably done to incorporate the engineering of the backpack because there's a lot of stuff that kind of needs to move around just right with barely enough clearance. My other negative is just the lack of paint. It just looks plain. It doesn't look master PC. It looks classic PC. It doesn't immediately strike you as something to be taken seriously when you get it out of the box. And I think that's largely to do with some aesthetic choices, namely the gaps in the hips and the potential gap in the neck, but you can cover that up fairly well, I think, but also the lack of paint. And all of that plain glossy plastic just has a tendency to look like less, in my opinion. My other issue is I've had a hard time getting her to stand. I've had a hard time getting her balanced. Now, it could be the felt because she posed much better when I had her on the shelf with my other stuff, but, but I rarely run into problems with figures standing on my felt. Don't be standing on my felt, but anyway. Positives wise, there's a lot to talk about. The engineering for the most part, with a few exceptions, is pretty fun, intuitive, and enjoyable. A fair amount of the materials do feel good, especially the die cast in the legs and some of the places where they can utilize thicker plastics like in the hips, thighs, and waist. The head sculpt is beautiful, and where they did apply paint, it's applied very well and looks sharp. It's also super poseable and lends itself to dynamic poses. You won't have any problem getting this young lady into really cool action poses. It'll come very naturally. I can definitely 
recommend this figure, but it comes down to intent. If your intent is for a powerful display piece, this could work if you're going for a super dynamic pose. If you're going for a more stoic pose because you're shelf conscious in regards to space, this probably isn't the best choice, but it's not an inherently wrong choice nor poor choice. It's just kind of fine. And that's my main issue with a lot of MMC Ocular Max stuff is since Mirage, there's been a lot of just fine stuff. The stuff that they knock out of the park, like the tapes, I don't see them putting their full interest into and I wish they would. Instead, we got this Bruticus coming, which is a whole other ball of wax. I take Halloween seriously. It's an important holiday to me for a number of reasons that I won't bore you with here. But I do costumes. I do costume every year and they've become more and more extravagant throughout time. And one of the reasons why my buddy Adam says I do a good job with my costumes is because I play to my strengths. I don't try to be any kind of obese dude. I don't try to be any kind of skinny dude or any muscle builder type dude. I'm definitely not going for a character that has his shirt off. I play to characters that I can kind of squeeze myself into the mold of. I play to my strengths. I don't know if MMC is playing to theirs. They've done some incredible stuff with their reformatted line, but some of their choices in their reformatted line I find bizarre. And they've done some really great stuff with their tapes, but I don't see a whole lot of tape news coming either. I'm not sure why a company strikes a stellar reputation within a certain avenue and then almost seems to turn their nose up to it like they're too good to be known to, for being good at that instead of just taking pride in the fact that they're good at that. I think much like T-Boz, Lisa Left Eye Lopez, and Miss Chili herself, I would advise MMC to not go chasing waterfalls, but stick to the rivers and the lakes that they're used to. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.